we don't have a lot of information just yet. A uh, text was sent by the Joint Chiefs of Staff here in South Korea to reporters a short while ago, uh, indicating that a projectile had been fired into the East Sea. Now, they only send a message like that out when it's a ballistic missile. Certainly, that's the norm. So the expectation is that's what this was. The building you can see behind me is the Institute for Korea Reunification. It's a government think tank. I happened to be speaking with a government policy advisor uh, when we heard about the launch, and his immediate reaction was, this is a short-range ballistic missile. Uh, we yet yet to find out if that is the case, but his feeling was that this is, again, Pyongyang sending a message that it wants to hold talks. It wants to get diplomacy going again. It comes as the intelligence chiefs of Japan, uh, South Korea, the U.S. are meeting here in Korea, and as the nuclear envoys of those three countries are also meeting in the United States. But he says both Pyongyang and Seoul are probably in a hurry because President Moon Jae-in here only has about another five months left in office. And for there to be a summit with the United States and uh, the DPRK, first of all, it is expected there needs to be a summit between Seoul and Pyongyang. And this is something that both President Moon and Kim Jong-un have stated that they want. So as these meetings go on, the DPRK uh, you know, sending another message. And when I spoke to the, uh, the advisor in the building behind me, he said he expects that both sides will probably be pushing for an inter-Korean summit in November. Well, yeah, let's talk about the timing of this launch and bring you in, Ira. As, this, as we just mentioned, this comes as the top nuclear envoys from South Korea, U.S.-Japan meeting in Washington. What can you tell us about what's being discussed? Well, we heard from the U.S. Uh, special representative to the uh, DPRK, uh, Sung Kim, uh, earlier in the day. Of course, this was before the latest news of uh, this possible uh, weapons launch off of the Korean Peninsula. But what he had to say after that initial meeting with his South Korean counterpart was uh, that from the U.S. perspective, he said, we will seek diplomacy with the DPRK to make tangible progress that increases the security of the United States and our allies. Uh, and he went on to stress that uh, the U.S. is looking to meet with uh, the DPRK's leaders again to, uh, to discuss the de denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, saying that uh, the U.S. wanted to do so without preconditions, uh, but also adding that the uh, allies of the United States need to adhere to the uh, United States Security Council uh, resolutions, which uh, is, is basically referring to the sanctions, which uh, the DPRK is, of course, uh, very upset about. So uh, that is what has happened in Washington. Now, uh, the next day, we'll have what we expect to be a trilateral meeting, bringing in uh, the Japanese side as well. Yeah, let's talk about that trilateral meeting now just a few hours away on Tuesday. How do you think this launch is going to change the conversation? Well, that is a big question, although the DPRK certainly has carried out several uh, launches in the past weeks and months. So in, in, in some sense, this shouldn't really uh, come as a surprise. But I think one of the big uh, tasks at hand for the representatives of these three countries, this is the first time uh, that we're having this kind of meeting since uh, Fumio Kishida was elected as the new prime minister of Japan earlier this month. So I think a big focus will be trying to uh, sort of understand what Japan's role possibly could be. And of course, as the uh, U.S. envoy stated earlier, uh, the common goal is to try and continue with the denuclearization talks, which uh, have really broken down, of course, uh, in, in the past year. All right, we'll see what develops. We keep an eye on this launch and, of course, these meetings coming up in a few hours in the United States. Iris Spitzer, live for us in San Francisco. Jack Barton and Seoul, thank you both.